Our current consumption of fossil fuels is a major problem for everybody, especially those concerned with the price, environmental impact, and sustainability. Sources of alternative fuels will hopefully supplement petroleum in the future. My name is Vijay Toko, and this summer I researched algae biofuels with Professor Phil Savage. Algae biofuels are particularly attractive because they are renewable, carbon neutral, not used for human food, and don't require much land to grow. We use batch reactors such as this one to liquefy algae. Hydrothermal liquefaction is only one of the several ways to harvest energy from biomass. It uses water as a solvent under extreme temperatures and pressures. But before I explain further, let's first look at where crude oil comes from. Millions of years ago, a bunch of plants and animals died. But instead of decaying, they got buried under tons of rock. Their dead bodies got converted into crude oil under very high temperatures and pressures. Today, energy companies drill beneath the surface to harvest the crude oil. In fact, when you think about it, what nature does is very close to hydrothermal liquefaction. Of course, nature takes millions of years, and our lab can do it in about half an hour. Now that you're caught up, I'm going to take you into our lab to show you a typical experiment. The experiment begins by loading a known amount of algae into the batch reactor. Next, water is added to produce a slurry of desired concentration. High pressure valves are attached to collect gaseous products and they're sealed with a torque wrench to 45 foot-pounds. This is a fluidized sand bath that is used to supply heat to the reaction. Here's what it looks like without the sand. The coils at the bottom are the heating elements, and air bubbles up from the holes in the bottom. This particular experiment takes place at 350 degrees Celsius and 2400 PSI. Loading reactors in the sand bath requires a face shield and heat resistant gloves because the sand is hot enough to burn skin. When it's time to stop the reaction, the reactors get quenched into a water bath. Listen closely. That's hot. After analyzing the gases made in the reaction, solvent is added to the reactor to extract the products. The contents are poured into a test tube. Here's what the full tube looks like. To make separating the phases easier, the tubes are centrifuged. The yellow at the top is the aqueous phase, which contains water and water-soluble products. And the black is the organic phase, which contains the bio-oil. It's difficult to see, but there is also solid phase particles at the interface. Each phase is separated and analyzed separately. Each experiment takes about a day and a half, start to finish. Our lab looks at a variety of different reaction parameters such as time, temperature, catalyst effects, and strain of algae used. Different strains have different concentrations of macronutrients. For example, this summer I've worked with protein-rich nanochloropsis, carbohydrate-rich scanodesmus, and lipid-rich chlorella. Ultimately, the goal of this project is to develop a set of equations that will allow us to predict the quality and quantity of bio-oil from any strain of algae given its composition. This will allow us to choose the best algae by calculation rather than trial and error. And that concludes what I wanted to show you for today. I hope you found my project as interesting as I do. Roll the credits.